Okay, we're going to give you a quick introduction to the new heated chilled vacuum bed. This is for people who need a cold surface to print on. Um, see we have a hundred millimeter square bed with a vacuum channel um, milled in it. This is mounted on top of the refrigeration unit which is controlled through software just like any of our heads. In this situation I've attached a small um, vacuum pump that's controlled from this head controller but you could use any type of um, vacuum source if you need the vacuum. You don't necessarily need it and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to come over here. Let me get a mouse so I can adjust the temperature. Alright, so I'm going to set this to negative 20 which is going to be the maximum setting. The realistic temperature you reach is going to be closer to minus 10 Celsius. And this will take a few minutes to cool down. And while it's cooling down, um, it'll start to condense uh, water on the surface. And one trick for holding down your print surface, in this case, I just have a semiconductor wafer because we have these laying around. A smooth ground glass surface, anything that's flat, would be a fine print surface. You can hold it down by turning on the vacuum pump, which I'm going to do here. You can see that makes a vacuum. And, but another thing I'm going to do is add, once some condensation starts to form on the bed and it starts to cool down, we're going to put the bed on top of that, then turn on the vacuum, and you'll see that, um, that the water is going to freeze and lock the print surface in place. Alright, so we have a little bit of moisture on the surface of the print bed. And what this is going to do is help form that vacuum seal. And now, um, as the temperature drops below freezing again, that little bit of moisture is going to freeze and just help lock this into place. And that's just one method of attaching your print surface. Now right now we're just doing the, um, the cooling effect. We're going to show you how it can also heat up. But while, while we're waiting for this to cool down, talk about cable routing. Um, this will have our standard bulkhead connector. And this can be routed by drilling for a permanent installation. You can mount the chassis into the bulkhead connector right here and use cable ties to secure the cable so that it does not interfere with any of the motion as the z-axis goes up and down. Alright, you can start to see some condensation forming on top of this wafer now. So let's uh, give this a minute to get cold. Why don't you go and stop this for now? Okay, it's been a few minutes, and now we're reading minus seven degrees Celsius on our RTD, which is in the aluminum plate. And um, you can see frost forming on top. And we can even, if we turn off the vacuum, this is still adhered. You can still pop it up if you need to, but it gives you it gives you a little extra um, extra strength. So um, if you let it sit about 10 minutes, you can reach probably negative uh, 10 Celsius. Of course, this all depends on your ambient temperature. And in some circumstances, I've gotten it you know, down to negative 15. But this should uh, work for most applications. All right, so now we're going to demonstrate the other end of this, which is the heating function. Let me go ahead and Turn off the vacuum pump. So if I want to rapidly raise my temperature here. Alright, so now we're 
heating the bed. You can see the moisture has, the, the ice has thawed. This is, the wafer is loose again. Turn the vacuum back on. Lock the wafer down. Okay, I've set this to 50, we're now at 25. So you can see you can rapidly go from sub-zero temperatures to very warm temperatures. You can get up to 80C with this. Um, again, just depends on your specific application. Right, so we're at 40 degrees C, so you see it just takes a few minutes to go from, from negative, negative 5, negative 10 up to 40 or 50 C. So it just depends on what you want to do with it there. So I'm going to turn off the vacuum pump. We can now release the wafer. And this is attached to your um, standard T-slot plate using T-slots in the four corners. Um, this is trammable by using your indicator you can tram to the four points. These corners are spring-loaded, so you can level this very precisely using just our standard um, tramming gauge by you know checking checking the level at each uh, each point. Um, anyway, I guess that's about it. If you have any more questions, hyro3d at gmail.com.